Hi, everybody. Welcome to the IoT webinar, Internet of Things, System Architecture and Integration. We're going to start off with a welcome from the Dean of the School of Engineering, Technology and Applied Science, Dr. Patrick Kelly. Thank you, Greg. Well, welcome everyone to uh, an info session for our uh, newer program, uh, the Internet of Things. And uh, my name, as Greg mentioned, is Patrick Kelly, and I'm the Dean of the School of Engineering, Technology and Applied Science, better known as CTAS. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of some of the uh, uh, key elements of the school, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, my esteemed colleague to talk to you about uh, a program that we're very excited about, uh, our new grad certificate uh, in the Internet of Things. So, Greg, if you could just uh, advance that slide, I'll begin with my school presentation. So just to let uh, everyone in the audience know, uh, CTAS, School of Engineering and Technology and Applied Science, uh, we're the largest school at Centennial College and we have over 6,000 students and we offer a full range of programs from apprenticeship, diplomas, um, and graduate certificates and degree programs as well. And all of our programs or the vast majority of our programs culminate in a capstone project where students work in teams to solve issues faced by industry. And the best of our capstone projects appear at our annual technology fair. And uh, the timing's interesting because our technology fair is taking place, it, what took place all this week, um, but the judging and awards are taking place today virtually. And this is our 10th annual uh, capstone project. And uh, we also, uh, work hard in integrating service learning opportunities for our students as well. So those 6,000 students, they're spread across four departments uh, in the school. And the first one being Applied Biological Environmental Sciences. You see the programs there, Biotech, Environmental, Food Science, Med Lab, Biomedical. Then we have Information Communication and Engineering Technology. So that's where we have our networking programs, software, our whole cluster of software, be it gaming, artificial intelligence, health informatics, artificial uh, intelligence as well, and then our, our uh, traditional uh, programming, as well as grad certificates in mobile applications, cybersecurity. We have our four-year degree in computer and communication networks. And of course, our um, newer Internet of Things grad certificate that uh, we're going to tell you a lot more about uh, in the upcoming slides. The last two departments, Advanced Manufacturing and Automation Technology, have automation robotics, mechanical, uh, electrical programs, as well as product design and development, and our aerospace manufacturing engineering programs as well. And our final department would be Sustainable Design and Renewable Energy, and that has our architecture, construction management, electronics, energy systems, heating, refrigeration, and air conditioning, as well as all of our mathematics offerings across the school, which are so important to Eng Tech and Applied Science programming. Next, Greg. So what you're looking at here is a very exciting thing that we participate in every year, uh, Skills Ontario, and it, we think of it as the Post, uh, the Olympics of post-secondary education, where all the colleges come together and the students compete in time competitions. And that's taking place uh, over the next couple of weeks as well. It's a busy time for us here. Um, but this is a great picture because uh, we've been competing over the last eight years at Skills Ontario. And this is a shot of the, the college, Centennial College, winning the College of Distinction Award. So we basically, of all the community colleges in Ontario, uh, came out on top and we were given uh, or earned at least the College of Distinction Award. So we're very, very proud of that. And we've done that three years in a row and we're looking this year to be the only college to do it four years in a row. So we're very excited about that. Speaks highly of our students' abilities and uh, under the guidance of our talented faculty and support staff. Next slide, please. So we just want to get a sense. I mean, these, these pictures obviously don't do us justice, but we're very proud of our facilities at all of our campuses. And we really integrate experiential hands-on learning into all of our programs. So here you're looking at just a snapshot of some of our high-tech sophisticated labs we have uh, at the college. And if I look at the uh, top right and then go clockwise, that's one of our software labs. And then move down bottom right, 
would be uh, one of our labs at uh, our aerospace campus at Dalesview, so one of our aerospace labs. Bottom left would be one of our networking labs at Progress. And then top left, we have our analytical, one of our analytical chemistry labs at Morningside campus. So very much our students spend a lot of time in labs applying the theory that they learn uh, and really working with uh, really up to date, the latest, greatest uh, technologies from industry. Next slide, please. Uh, and then I wanted to mention here our applied research and innovation activities. So uh, the school, CTAS, we're very involved in working with small and medium-sized companies to work with them and uh, partner with um, other post-secondaries as well in applied research. So it's really looking at commercialization of products and processes and helping small, medium-sized companies uh, stay current, stay relevant in the applied research area. And it's all about generating jobs for the Ontario Canadian economy. And it provides a lot of opportunities for our students to interact with industry um, as they work on these applied research projects. So for the grad certificates, uh, which are two or the internet being a three-term program, uh, may not be as much time to get fully involved in applied research, but there could be some opportunities. We're very proud to mention that Centennial is ranked number one paid internships in the applied research area across Canada. So it's a tremendous benefit for our students. Uh, and it also keeps and ensures that our uh, curriculum maintains its currency. So with that, um, we're now going to turn it over a really brief shot of uh, the, the school snapshot. So I want to introduce a colleague of mine, an esteemed colleague of mine, who I've had the privilege of working with over, geez, over the last 20 years or so, uh, Professor Alan Reed, who uh, has uh, incredible technical depth, um, is a great professor and great with our students, um, but really instrumental in bringing this program to fruition and working with our industry partners. So uh, Alan is going to go through the nuts and bolts and, and talk about the curriculum of the program. So Alan, over to you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, it was a great introduction. Um, just before we start, uh, can I sort of get a, a feeling from the audience as to uh, what what is your background? Because this is a, a graduate program, a graduate certificate program to build on an existing skill set. And we're going to go through what the Internet of Things is all about and um, where it fits in but if you could enter it in the, the chat what your background is that'd be great okay so i see an engineer electronics and automation engineer commerce mechanical electrical engineer um, science computer science networking supply chain so if, if you um, read through the chat you, you'll see that People are from a, a wide range uh, of industries, right? A, a, a wide range of um, backgrounds and, and that. And this IoT program was designed just for you. It was designed to take a new skill set, an emerging technology, an emerging item like the Internet of Things. It's fairly new, even though it's been around since 1998, the original terminology. But um, it really the implementation is skyrocketing. We'll see that in a minute. And it, it has applications to all the different fields. So uh, Greg is sharing right now is a definition, a textbook definition, dictionary of what the Internet of Things is. And he just changed the slide, but that, that's fine. Um, because the, the Internet of Things has multiple definitions. If Greg, if you go back one slide for a second, you can do that. Okay. You can see um, this is from the Oxford Dictionary. And all it defines it is, is the connection via the internet of computing devices and everyday devices. And we, we normally look at things like, um, you know, a computer terminal, an iPad, an, an iPhone. These types of things have been connected to the internet for a long time. And what the IoT is doing is it's looking at non-traditional devices, things like refrigerators, um, things like um, in, in industrial IoT, large manufacturing equipment, cars, right? You've heard all about the self-driving cars. 
things along that line that traditionally did not have internet connectivity is now gaining that. And if you go to the next slide now, Greg, and if you look at the, the Wikipedia definition when he brings it up, right, the bottom right corner one there, you can see if you read through that, it also stresses that the Internet of Things, even though the Oxford Dictionary says connected via the Internet, we don't need the Internet to work with the Internet of Things. It can be an internal network. It can be an edge device, right, which is local instead of having to go off to the cloud. So the cloud, the Internet is not required to bring up the Internet of Things technology. And if you go to the next slide for a second. Going on one. Um, this is a, a business intelligence, uh, a back one. But the, the, the one that he just had on the screen was the, the business intelligence because it, it's more so than just connecting devices to the internet. It's why are we connecting these devices to the internet or to a network? And why we're trying to connect them is to either control them or to gain information from them. And the information we gain, we want to use that information to control something. If it's a self-driving car, we want it to um, control the path of the car or to make sure that the car avoids hitting an object that just ran out in the road in front of it. If it's a manufacturing piece of equipment, we want to use the results of the manufacturing process. You know, is the object um, thick, thin, um, too long, too short? We want to use that information, that data that we're acquiring to make a change in the process, to, to alter the function. If it's your refrigerator, we, we want it to maybe decrease the temperature or increase the temperature or alert us that we don't have a certain product. Okay. Uh, what, what has happened? Um, if you go to the next slide, there's a, a little graph. Over the last few years, there, there's been a, a phenomenal growth of things that have been connected to the internet. Things, and these are really things that were not previously connected. These aren't PCs and game consoles. These are things like refrigerators and that, that they're being connected. And, and it, it's actually clearer if you go to the next slide. You can see the growth, right? Just look at the right-hand side of that curve. It, it's, it's just skyrocketing. We're up to um, various sources, say 45, 48, um, 50. You know, these are billions of devices that have been connected to the network right now. And how, what are we going to do with all these devices? How, how are we going to use them? How are we going to control them? What information can they provide? Okay. And if you go to the next one, The, you know, the economists love to look at how a field is doing. And um, just the uh, two dates there, 2018 and by 2026. And I picked this slide because it's sort of, we're in the middle of this right now, but the, the average growth rate, the annual year over year growth rate of this is 25%. And the current pandemic has actually accelerated the growth rate that um, you know, it's, it's in different areas, but it has accelerated it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you swap over to the next one. Okay. okay. Now, when I say the, the IoT and what we're trying to give you a skill set on what this IoT technology is all about, but First thing we'll look at is where can it be applied? And these are some of the vertical markets. And these isn't all the vertical markets. These are some of the common vertical markets where IoT technology is being applied. And with the pandemic, healthcare has moved up to the number one position, right? Because right now we're trying to take people out of harm's way. So we're offloading a lot of the healthcare applications to this IoT technology. So 
People can do remote diagnosis. They can collect data remotely without putting themselves in harm's way. So this is a, a fantastic area. A whole area has been generated over the last two years. Now, before that, we were into wearable devices, things that might do blood sensing. Uh, blood pressure sensing or, um, you know, the oxygen content of the blood, but it's just ballooned over the last couple of years. And um, I, I saw that some people might be interested in supply chain, logistics, um, energies. Now we're all into smart grids where your power grid is, is controlled by the IOT. It takes information in and makes decisions based on the information it collects and does something, it might change the um, traffic pattern, right? So it starts to change how long a light, a street light stays lit, or it might change the direction of a one-way road for the, the traffic flow, right? That goes down to transportation. But all these areas, I'm not going to go through each one of them, but each one of these areas, plus a lot more, are now using IoT technology. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, now, I, I, I tried to get a feel for, you know, what companies out there that are, are looking for people in IoT and they're into IoT development in one way or another. And it was actually hard to find a company that wasn't using IoT. Every company is now getting into IoT because they recognize the benefits of the IoT technology and um, what they can do with the IoT technology. They can become more efficient. They can increase profit margins. They can reduce the danger to their employees. There's lots of different things that the technology can do for companies. So companies are hiring. Companies are developing. And this is just a list of some of, of bigger companies that are around the world that are, have been hiring recently, very recently. Okay, and you swap over to the next slide, please. And so what jobs? Um, you know, the, the, the IoT, we're going to see in a minute that the IoT isn't one thing. It, it's not like, okay, well, I, I know Microsoft Windows. <clears throat> Excuse me. The IoT involves so much technology, and it's technology that's now being used together to produce an outcome. Okay. So we were looking at each of this technology separately. Now we're looking at together and, and what can it do. Okay. And if Greg goes back to that slide. Um, next one, please, Greg. These are just some of the job roles that I, I pulled off. And th th this is current. Okay? This is over the last week in that. So, you know, there's everything from cloud engineers to material specialists, to programmers, to test engineers, to electronics, people who have to build the sensors and that. There's jobs in almost every field that you can think of that are relying on, on the IoT or contributing to the IoT. Okay, next one, please. I also tried to um, come up, and, and this is obviously the, the US and Canada. Um, I, I tried to come up with a salary, a range of what an IoT graduate, IoT specialist could expect in the field. And obviously there's so many variables that go into salary ranges. But if you look at it, the U.S. range is 118,000 to 148,000. Okay, and um, in Canada, it's roughly the same range, with the average being 102. <clears throat> so th this is a very well-paying field because it's a field that there's not many people involved in yet. We we have programmers, we have electronics people, we have all these individual people that are highly skilled in their trade and what they are doing currently, but this is putting it all together and that's where the shortage comes in. So for people that can understand how all this technology works together, 
the um, jobs are out there, they're well paying, and they're not extremely hard to get, right? Next slide, please. Okay. So, you know, when, when we um, started looking, the question is always, why, why Centennial versus anybody else out there? Well, one of the first things is, Patrick brought this up, that we already have some very good programs in networking software, mobile, cybersecurity. We, we have all these programs already. So we have skilled faculty and we have expertise. We have the labs, we have the equipment, we have the knowledge. And what the IoT is doing is trying to bring all this together and present it in a new way. Okay. The other thing about Centennial is that the next slide or so we're, we're going to look at something called the IoT ecosystem on the back, back. But if we start looking at it, I, again, I say the IoT isn't one thing. It's all the, these different things. And what we try to do in this program is give people something in everything, you know, in all parts of the IoT ecosystem. So we weren't going to make you a, a super programmer or um, uh, super in cloud technology, but we're going to try to give enough in all of the different areas that you, you are what is in demand. Somebody that can look from the 10,000 foot view and bring all the technology together. If you're not a programmer and um, you say my IoT solution requires a programmer, you can hire a programmer, right? But you, we need the visionaries, the people that know how all the pieces work together. And one of the things that we did with a lot of effort was that we, we brought it up to three semesters of technology, but we delivered it in one calendar year. Because we know that uh, because this is a post diploma, a graduate certificate, a lot of people can't take off two years or three years to, to pick up a new career. So we fought hard and we got this delivered in one calendar year, but it's three semesters of training. And um, when we were developing it, it was our advisory committee, and that's the list there under the industry partners. Um, we didn't do it by ourselves. We actually went out there and looked at the people in the industry, the people that were hiring, people that were using the technology and said, what do we need? What do we have to deliver? What are you short? And one of the big things was the fact that it, that person that can look at it from 10,000 feet, they can look and integrate all the different pieces. That's what they were all missing. But um, you know everything from Cisco to exposure managed networks there on that list. These are the people that we invited in that participated in the development of this program. Okay. And the next slide, please. I, I know this is eye candy and you probably aren't going to read it all, but um, th these are the pro um, program vocational learning outcomes, the PVLOs of this program. And um, the PVLOs are what we are committing to the government and to our students that after you get through the entire program, these are the outcomes that you will have. These are what you will be able to do, what you will understand and that. And um, if you just skim through the list there, you can see that there's a lot of planning, designing work, um, working with others uh, to integrate a, an IoT solution for a specific industry, okay? Here is just a, a graphic of some of the industries that are making use of the IoT. And you notice they all say smart at the beginning of them. And whether it's smart security or smart healthcare or smart whatever, um, that's what the smart is, it goes back to that business intelligence slide. You know, sure, we, we've had sensors, the electronics people can build a sensor and put a, a sensor in, in any environment to measure the, say the temperature of the environment. But IoT takes it one step further. 
it takes a look at the data that's coming from that sensor and that then it grabs a whole pile of other information. It might look at um, information about the time of day, the room occupancy, the, um, you know, all the stuff and it brings it all together and looks for patterns. It looks and says, well, is somebody going to be coming into this room? Is the um, usage going to increase or decrease? And, and, that, and it brings all that together and extracts the patterns, looks for the information and makes a decision based on the information that it sees. And that's what makes it smart. It can adapt environmental con to environmental conditions. And, and here's what I, I was mentioning, the IoT ecosystem. And th this is the important thing because the, again, IoT isn't one thing. IoT is everything. Um, when it first came out, one of the terminologies that was used to describe it was IOE, Internet of Everything. And that was because people were saying, well, what is this thing really? It's, it's a bunch of devices that have sensors and actuators. You know, a sensor senses the environmental conditions, an actuator interacts with the conditions. I might turn on a switch or decrease the temperature or turn on a machine. Um, but it interacts with the environment. And when they started looking at it and then looked at how people interact, so we got machines talking to machines, machines talking to people, um, people talking to people, right? We got all these different communications and all this stuff coming out. They initially termed the internet of everything because they, they couldn't pull out exactly what it was. And then it went through a number of name changes. But um, this is what they've sort of settled on for the IoT ecosystem. And you know, you, you'll see some people talk about five components, some say it's seven, but it's, it's the big things, right? This, the sensors and actuators. How does it interact with the environment? The connectivity, well, how does it get the information to and from the sensors and actuators? The IoT cloud, well, remember it's internet of everything. And I said, it doesn't have to be internet. So a lot of devices are not using the internet, but they might be doing edge, which is part of a network, but not necessarily the internet, not necessarily a cloud to do that computational activity it needs to do to pull out the data, pull out the information from the data, okay? If it's a lot of heavy duty calculations, it usually goes up to the cloud. If it's um, short calculations and that, that says a self-driving car that has to avoid an object that's been thrown out into the road, that's probably going to be the edge computing. And um, previously on that slide, if Greg wants to go back, the, the other two steps there where analytics and data management, because the IoT collects and works with a huge amount of data. So we, we have to store, we have to process it, we have to extract the information from within that data. So that's a whole big area of the IoT. And that's where we start getting things like machine learning, artificial intelligence. What do we do with the data? And then with devices and interfaces, it's a matter of what devices are we connecting? How are we connecting them? And what, how are we making them accessible? Because we can develop a, a fantastic IoT solution, but if people can't interface with it, if you can't pick up your smartphone and have a nice simple interface on your smartphone to turn something on or turn something off, it's not going to be used. So that's another big area of um, the IoT ecosystem. And what we try to do in our program is to look at every one of these areas. Um, and, and this is just the, another graphical representation. So when we say the IoT platform, that could be the hardware, but you see uh, on the left-hand side are the devices. And those devices have sensors and actuators embedded in them, depending upon what they're designed to do. If it's say a, a home security, it might be a camera. It might be a door alarm, okay? If it's uh, industrial IoT, 
those devices could be big, large scale manufacturing devices that we're going to control or some portion of those. So those IoT devices can be anything right now. A refrigerator, a microwave oven, a car. On the other hand, there, the device management data storage, these are all the types of things that we have to do with the information that is stored within the data. So we want to display it visually. We want to store it. We want to analyze it. Um, some of you may know about augmented reality versus virtual reality. Augmented reality is incorporating a virtual component into um, the, the reality. So you can get augmented reality glasses that, for instance, pilots use all the time. And um, it puts all the control information right into their field of view at the same time that they're mixing that virtual information with the real information that they can see out the cockpit windshield. Okay. And that's big in gaming right now. So all the stuff on the right hand side is what we're trying to do with the information that we are collecting from the left hand side and also the other way around the all that information that we've extracted from the data is going to be applied back to the left hand side through devices right remember we had sensors and actuators sensors collect information augmenter sorry um the actuators react with the environment the physical environment okay and these are just our industry partners again some of our industry partners that um, since we developed the, the program, our advisory committee is changing. More people are, are getting interest. More people want to come on board to help shape what we are offering. But these are the original companies. Bottom left-hand corner there, where you see Mark Angelo Capetta. Um, I'm proud of him. He was one of our students, right? Him and um, the, the third place there. Strong. They were both from Centennial, both from the same year. So they were, were graduates and they won gold and, and um, bronze and skills. Okay. I just had to promote them. Now, here's our, our program. Now, we're, we're getting down into the program subjects. And remember, you always have to think back to the ecosystem that I talked about. And what we are doing, we're developing this to, for, or we have developed it for delivery over three semesters. But looked at it and said, well, what do we want to do in each of these semesters? We wanted to build on everything. And when we first come in, semester one, we're assuming that a person doesn't really have a lot of knowledge about the IoT and may not know about all the different pieces in the ecosystem. They may not know electronics or they may not know programming, okay? Or they may not know about cloud. So what we're trying to do in the first semester is put everybody at the same basis. Make sure that everybody understands enough about all those portions of the ecosystem in order to become productive. And the next two slides actually talk about what's in the course. So you want to go on to those, please, Greg? Yeah. So the 701 course, the introduction to IoT, is a course just to explore the IoT, to look at it and say, what can it do? What is it being used for? Right? Let's get excited about the IoT because it can do so much. And people are using it in so many different ways. We wanted to make sure that everybody understood the potential and the, the potential of the IoT, what the um, statement is now is it's limited only by your imagination, right? The technology is out there and it's graduates of programs like this that are going to shape what can be done with the technology. So the technology isn't a limitation, the imagination is. And, and that's what that 701 course is all about. Right, get excited about it, understand its capabilities. The 702 course is actually a long course and these aren't all equal in duration, but the 702 course is to give hands-on experience with the electronics. Now I noticed in the chat 
Some people were electronics engineer, but there were other people that probably didn't have any background in electronics. So this is a course, again, to make sure that everybody has the same basic knowledge. People may come in with it, people may have zero when they come in. And same with 703, but that's now on the programming side because the programming is something that is extremely important. Remember when we get, I mentioned artificial intelligence, machine learning, that's all based on the program, the ability to interact with the huge amount of data that's coming in through the, what you're learning in the 702 course, through the sensors and actuators, the information comes in through the sensors, out through the actuators, but it has to be under program control. So 703 is all about programming. Basics, go to the next slide, please. Um, the next two, um, 705 is the easiest one to talk about. It, it's all about the cloud. And there are some very special components in cloud, whether it's from Amazon or, or Google or Azure, right? All, all these different cloud manufacturers recognize the importance of the cloud in the IoT and have created special environments for use in the IoT. And these environments are being used increasingly. So what this course is all about is trying to give people an idea, not becoming, you know, saying you must use Amazon or you must use Azure, but to say, this is what's out there. This is how we can use the cloud. This is what the cloud is. This is what the cloud is capable of. So again, foundation course. And then the IoT infrastructure course is all about the communications. And how do we get the information from the sensor? How do we get it up to the cloud? Well, once we have it in the cloud and the cloud sends something back, how do we get it back to the actuator? And, and that's what the uh, IoT infrastructure is. That's that connectivity portion. Okay. So after semester one, everybody has that foundation, same foundation. And this is semester two. And if you, you look here, now we're starting to get into some other aspects of the IoT, right? We still have to look at programming because programming is something that requires more time. So more advanced programming, um, and we can go to the next slide because it actually gives a description of each of the courses. But um, 721 is about advanced IoT programming. 722, there is, is um, all about artificial intelligence, machine learning, right? And 723 is big data. So the big data is the data that's collected because of the IoT. And you know, we, we define what big data is, we look at big data, that translates into storage because we have all this phenomenal amount of data. How do we store it? How do we manage it? Okay, so we look at big data and then the AI is machine learning. How do we get into that big data to extract the information? So next slide quickly. Okay. We, we also have to start looking at security because um, a lot of things are developed without security as their first endeavor, shall we say. And the IoT was one of these. The IoT was developed because of convenience, just like the internet, right? With the, if the internet or IoT, security was not considered when it first developed. So there were so many security holes in it we have to go back now and look at it and say, well, where should security be applied? How should security be applied? And how can we fix the early devices where security wasn't applied? And that's what the IoT security course is about. It, it's not basic network security or application security, but it includes those, right? Because the IoT has so many moving parts, we have to look and consider each of them from a security perspective. And um, the, the capstone project, you heard Patrick talk about these capstones and the capstones are designed 
to give you some real world experience. And um, what we're hoping is that during the capstone, you see this one's capstone project one. This is getting you ready for the capstone project to, to work with an industry partner on a real world problem. Remember the, the purpose of this program is to, to make sure that you can develop an IOT based solution to a real world problem. There's no sense in developing something if there's no need for it. But um, you know, how can you get in there? So in this first course, we give you project management skills because when you work on a capstone, especially in IoT, you're going to have to work with many other people. You're going to have to work with programmers, electronics people, managers, right? It's going to be a, a group development effort. So we give you in the 725 course, project management skills and interpersonal skills and also get you set up with the industry partner. So you, you know what you're going to be working on. You can start doing some preliminary work on that project, on that problem with the partner, which now takes us to semester three. Remember, all this is occurring back to back. There's no breaks. Okay, so here's semester three. And semester three, the main purpose of this is to now look at, you know, in, the, in semester one, we gave you the basics. Semester two, we filled in some of the more important things like big data and artificial intelligence. Um, in semester three, the, the purpose is, now how do we get them all working together? How do we get you thinking about IoT as a system, as a big thing rather than a bunch of smaller components? So that is why we have that system integration course in there. Um, because in the system, okay, I'll go through them in order. Um, but here, we want to take the artificial intelligence, that, and specifically apply it to the IoT. How does this contribute to an IoT solution? We talked about big data. And one of the big problems with big data was how do we store it? How do we take care of it? Um, okay, so that's why the storage and virtualization course came up. And in addition to that, it sort of builds on the cloud course from semester one, because a lot of the stuff is virtualized in the cloud. And when I say virtualized, I don't just mean we're going to virtualize an application. Everything is virtualized now, whether it's infrastructure like routers and switches and uh, hubs and machines, uh, infrastructure as a service, or it could be application software as a service, right? So we look at big data, storage of big data, and how things are virtualized in order to handle the big data. Okay. 733 course is all about mobility because the, the IoT, even though it isn't specified, the IoT is mainly wireless technology. And when I say wireless, I, I don't just mean Wi-Fi. Right? Will you expect to be able to pick up your cell phone and control your home security system through your cell phone interface? Okay? So how do we make all that happen? Yep. The importance of 733 and next slide, please. Which is, oh. Okay, 734 is that system integration course. So this is the, the course where we tie it all together. Remember semester one, the 701 course was the introduction. And we're trying to get you excited about the IoT and give you exposure to what the IoT can do. Well, this is a course now that you've learned all the bits and pieces. You've learned programming, electronics, cloud. How do they all work together? Okay. How do they produce an IoT system? And then the IoT Capstone Project 2 is the culmination. This is the hands-on working with an industry partner to actually develop something that you've just learned, you know, two, two plus semesters of technology. Um, 734 course is teaching you about how it all fits together. 735 course is actually doing it, creating that solution. And next slide, please. And um, this this is the course in, in a nutshell, right? We we have two delivery, two modalities. 
This is the in-person, which is being offered in September. We are currently in an online offering, which was our, our first offering. So it will be changing back and forth depending upon the semester. And, okay. But you see it's one year, three semesters as a graduate certificate program. And the next slide, please. And this is where I hand off, but remember I, I said that it is a, a graduate certificate. It is to augment your currently existing skill set. So we are looking specifically for um, certain entry requirements. And I guess at this point, I turn it over to Greg. Thank you, Alan. Great presentation. So you can see on this slide that you are able to meet the English proficiency requirements for all of our programs in a variety of ways. It can be through English proficiency through previous education, through English upgrading. For example, we have our English language learning program at Centennial. We also have partnerships with ESL schools throughout Canada. Also, Centennial offers an English assessment test and demonstration of English proficiency through recognized proficiency tests or assessments. So this uh, uh, information is available on our website, centennialcollege.ca slash international. And uh, you can find the scores that are required for the different English tests. So these are some of the most popular tests we can take a look at here. You can see for fast track programs and for uh, graduate programs, the scores that are required. Uh, you can also meet the English proficiency requirements for our programs through previous education. So you can meet the requirements through successfully completing two or more consecutive full years at a recognized secondary or post-secondary education institution in a school where English is the primary language of instruction and communication. So it can be in a country where English is not the first language, as long as the school and the program, the academic content was delivered primarily in English. And uh, as well, we mentioned the English proficiency through English upgrading. Centennial's English language learning program offers a pathway to post-secondary and post-grad programs at Centennial. So for our graduate certificate programs, a student that studies the ELL, English Language Learning Pathway, will need to complete the 15-week semester of Level 5 with a minimum grade of 80% in all three of those courses. Before you take ELL, you'll complete our English assessment test, and the result of that test will determine which level you're placed in. Also want to touch on this important topic of opportunity to work in Canada. Uh, all of our programs, certificate, diploma, advanced diploma, and degree are post-graduation work permit eligible programs. The only program at Centennial that international students won't be eligible for the PGWP will be English language learning, which is a program to provide a pathway into the post-secondary and post-grad programs. And this is the case at all public institutions that English preparatory programs are not PGWP eligible. So if you do enroll in a certificate, degree, diploma, advanced diploma, graduate certificate program, your study permit is a work permit. So that means you can work 20 hours per week during your studies and full-time during scheduled breaks. So eligibility for the post-graduation work permit after your studies, then uh, a one-year program will provide eligibility for students to apply for a one-year PGWP, and a two-year program will provide eligibility for a two- to three-year post-graduation work permit. Another path that students uh, often consider if they are interested to stay and work and potentially even immigrate to Canada would be to take two one-year programs back-to-back. Uh, so if you combine two 
graduate level programs that are one year, you can combine the length of those two programs and apply then for the maximum three year post graduation work permit. So, for example, you might be interested to combine mobile applications development at graduate certificate and um, cybersecurity or cybersecurity and Internet of Things, or you can um, co combine with a program like project management in the School of Business, which um, can build on those project management skills that uh, were covered in that course in IoT. So now we would love to hear from you or our audience and answer any questions that you have uh, about the program as well as about admissions. Um, one of our attendees has asked, would you say that IoT has more demand on job fields nowadays compared to other CTES graduate programs like cybersecurity and mobile applications development? So obviously these are three fast growing fields, uh, all part of the digital economy. How would you compare Alan, the job prospects between these different programs. And I think as well that he's asking about nowadays, but also let's let's open that to the, the future as well. What, it, what Where do you see the job demand in the future? That's, that's a really hard question to answer because you're, you're asking to compare two different things. Cybersecurity is integrated into IoT. It's also a standalone field, right? Cybersecurity has applications outside of the IoT, but it has applications inside of the IoT. So I think there are two very good areas. There are two areas that have a lot of current jobs and I'm looking at what's happening in the industry. I think the ongoing, they're just going to get increasing number of jobs. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those two programs. It, it just depends. Do you, do you want to get more involved in the integration of technology to solve a solution which includes cybersecurity? Or are you more concerned with just dealing with the cybersecurity aspect and let somebody else deal with you know the electronics, the sensors, the cloud, and all that? So it, it really depends on your personal expectations. Yeah, I mean, certainly we do our, uh, I mean, our students, they're all about uh, jobs, right? And uh, one of our primary mandates at Centennial is educating students for career success. Um, we see tremendous opportunities across, you know, all areas of, of uh, IT, if you will, you know, software, networking, um, you know, the grad certificate, specifically mobile apps, um, cyber. Um, and if you just take a look, Alan provides some tremendous research, you know, as far as trying to predict trends and, and emerging areas and opportunities. Um, what we can say is, I mean, the Internet of Things, it's a newer program. We did one intake in the winter. Um, so uh, this is our second intake. So it's a tremendous opportunity um, for students to get into a new program to leverage themselves into this whole emerging area, if you will. But uh, right across the board, we're seeing some really strong job opportunities um, in uh, information technology, information communication and engineering technology. Yeah, awesome. if, I, if I could just add one other quick thing to um, supplement what Patrick said. Um, we routinely monitor the job boards in, in Canada and um, no matter what it is, whether it's cybersecurity or, or IoT, the job boards always go up to 2,000. And then above that, they say more than 2,000. So regularly, we're more than 2,000 available jobs in Canada for both of these fields. Uh, so another question there was about the co-op. So a student wondering why there's no co-op in this program. So maybe we could talk a little bit about how uh, that final capstone project in cooperation with an industry partner can provide some of those uh, hands-on industry skills. The capstone project is designed within our limitations of three semesters to offer what co-op would offer for a longer program. It, it does give you the hands-on working with the industry partner and um, hopefully that um, once you get tied up with them in semester two, 
and you prove yourself in semester two and the project in semester three, capstone two, um, then they will look at you favorably and either invite you back for an internship or employment. It's entirely up to the company. And um, I guess legal aspects of coming to Canada, but um, that's what it is. And we're trying, we're trying to contain all this within one calendar year, right? Three semesters. So we only have so much time to devote to each of the tasks. And we want to make sure that there was that hands-on, get involved with companies, get yourself out there, promote yourself and what you can do. Because it's all about what you can do, what you can accomplish. And I would just add to that, Alan, that's very, very good that uh, with our capstones right across the school, we really through I mentioned our technology fair, our annual technology fair. So we try to bring, you know, our, our highest caliber capstones to this annual event. And we have industry judging and things of that nature. But the school approach, you know, wherever we can, um, I guess, uh, enhance students opportunities to interact with industry it could be through that capstone, like through an industry sponsored capstone. Um, you know, we're very much uh, uh, in favor of that. Our co-op model, that's really for our, our three year advanced diplomas. Um, so, you know, it's uh, something that for the grad certificates, what we're finding is applicants coming in, they already have, you know, they need to have, you know, an advanced diploma or degree, you know, often they'll have some work experience. So they're, they're I could say perhaps uh, they're, they're more marketable than let's say uh, an applicant coming right out of high school. So that's why the co-op that's in our three-year advanced diplomas. But, you know, we feel with this, as, as Alan said, uh, and at any time you're designing a program, one of the most challenging things is, you know, what do you leave out, you know, because you're limited by that three terms. So uh, we feel the capstones that will give uh, ample opportunities for students to interface with uh, our industry partners. Um, so everyone that brings us to 10 and the conclusion of our IoT Internet of Things webinar. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for your questions and participation. And we look forward to receiving your applications. Uh, welcome to Centennial College and Welcome to Canada.